Let's now work this little example here that is again a system that includes an ideal coupler. The ideal coupler being this ideal electromechanical conversion, uh, which is the basis for a lot of um, DC motors. And this symbol actually uh, is usually specific to permanent magnet DC motors where the field uh, magnetic field is formed by permanent magnets. Sometimes you'll see different symbols where they show the little magnets. If we were to have a motor, say, that had actually a schematic with a separate field like this, this is a field excited DC motor, um, and that means that the conversion between the power electrical going to mechanical is controlled by this field circuit. So you'll see different examples like that uh, throughout this course. This is a permanent magnet DC motor. What, that, what this means is, and usually the specifications will be given, and usually you'll have from a manufacturer that that um, a constant is given, and I'm going to use a little R sub M times the current here, and I'm going to show that the current is the current in the armature. This is the, usually called the armature circuit. So that that armature current is converted through this motor constant, this is a little R sub M, into this ideal motor torque. And um, I'm using T sub M here, I'm just, it's just showing T there, but that's the ideal, um, clean that up a little bit, ideal conversion. There's other effects going on here with the motor that would take away from this ideal torque till it was found in concrete. We might even add, make this look a little bit like that previous example that had a gear pair and say, oh, there's actually also a in, in motor inertia and the gear set and then finally this is like the output speed, say, of the motor. But this ideal conversion is what's going on here and this, this is IA and we'll call that W sub M, which is the actual motor current uh, velocity, which is the velocity of that inertia. Uh, we might also add, you know, some, say that there's some some B here, some uh, motor linear damping. I'm going to go ahead and label this as R sub M, and this is uh, some inductance in the motor armature circuit. Okay, and um, we're going to say that the input source here, uh, say into the circuit, is some controlled voltage there. Okay. Um, okay. And so this 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 voltage here, I'm gonna call it V sub M, is is a voltage that you can't actually measure. It's the sorry that V sub M. There again. This V sub M is what's called the back EMF. Have you had a course, circuits, the mechatronics, where you've talked about little basic DC motors? Hopefully some of those terms will be familiar to you. So let's build a model for this system. On this graph, note that we would throw ones down here again because that velocity is the velocity right outside of that ideal coupling. So I'm just going to show the ideal couplers here. Let's derive equations in a conventional way. Later on, we'll build bond graphs of these systems, but for now, and then this is a gear, you know, might have some gear ratio here that we might deal with that too. Um, but for this model, I think we'll just uh, ignore this piece since we're not connecting to anything else. We'll just have kinetic energy storage in the inertia here. We have some losses. We have this ideal conversion. We have kinetic energy storage in this uh, in this uh, inductor, right? So how do we go about writing these equa equations? Well, possible states are um, the flux linkage in the motor and the momentum in the motor, right? The rate relations for those, remember, for for, for the flux linkage state for the inductor, the rate relation is the rate of change of 
the flux linkage and that's the voltage across uh, that inductance right the, and so we in order to find that remember we need to write KVL in this little loop here and so KVL in that loop is what it's plus the input voltage minus the voltage across the resistor minus oops we don't need that now because that's actually that voltage right and then we've moved it to this side I uh, hope you can see what I'm talking about that and now we've got this minus uh, what V sub M so the voltage drop across that guy in the KVL relation is actually this voltage so this is actually our little KVL relation right okay and um, in, in order to find each of these terms we need to know what uh, they are in terms of what inputs and states which are these two um, now uh, how do we f well we know that guy we need to find the voltage across the resistor and then we need to find V sub M what is the back EMF well the back EMF is actually remember with each coupler there's two relationships one is is uh, this relationship remember and and remember for an EM coupler you have the efforts related to the flow so the torque and this is torque and is related and remember to this current and the voltage this back EMF is going to be related to omega m and remember it's through the same constant so that's what makes it nice and easy you just remember that that motor constant is given and by the way to have units right of newton meters per amp okay um, sometimes you'll see on spec sheets a lot of different units but basically it has to come down to always being consistent in both cases um, R sub m times what? Times omega sub m, right? Because that voltage is related to that flow. So we can write V sub m in terms of omega m. We can write this voltage in terms of the current, which then we could write in terms of the flux linkage. So R sub m is equal to the resistance times the current through the resistance, which is I sub a, which we can relate through the constitutive relation for the inductor right as r sub m over l sub m times the flux linkage right this right here is i sub m which is the current through the inductor also okay and then v sub m so we have that term in terms of flux linkage and v sub m is what that's the back emf so it's r sub m times omega sub m and let's in this case you know you remember h sub m is j m times omega m we can go ahead and use omega the, ang the angular velocity of the motor as the state so we'll say that we're done once we sub substitute this term in here this term is now in terms of of this state so this equation is our first equation once you make those proper substitutions okay second one is we want the state equation for omega m well i know that h dot m is equal to j m omega dot m and that's the sum of the torques all right so what are the torques on this inertia well the first one is the torque coming from the motor right the other one is is the damping torque which works against that and that's it right there's no other torques we could say that there's a load coming back from here we can say that there's a minus some input load we'll make that as a function of time okay which is maybe on this side and uh, so now we need to replace all of these terms with inputs or states this guy's done t sub m well it's rm times i sub a and so you can show that t sub m being rm times i a is actually equal to rm over what ln times lambda m and tc tbm is just bm times omega m and if our states are going to be lambda and omega m i'm done with this term and i'm done with this term and that's my second state equation if you wanted to write this in terms of current you could divide through by inductance and get and, and write it instead of an equation in terms of current but it's easy enough after you solve it to 
remember that I sub A is just 1 over L M times that state. So uh, we're done.